Welcome to Footnotes by Pat Tremor. It's something that has never been done, ballroom dancing in its most glamorous form. In this series, I'm going to introduce to you the history of American style dancing. In the first episode, we're going to discuss the life and the works of Ned Wayburn, who was a genius in creating ballroom dance and stage dancing. Ned Wayburn was born in Pittsburgh in the year 1874, but spent most of his childhood and his life in Chicago. He started his career in the Hart Conway School of Acting in Chicago. It was there that he was influenced by major choreographers of the time, including Colonel Thomas Hoyer Monstry. While the Colonel was a master at fencing and lyrical training, Mr. Weber noticed that there was something lacking in his presentation. Leading up to this time, partner dancing was not incorporated as part of stage dancing. Mr. Weber wanted to change the way partner dancing was taught, so he took his idea to New York. Upon arriving to New York, Mr. Waven created a dancing troupe and started doing shows. He pioneered the art of uniform tap dancing and many of those are still in use today. Mr. Waven's career rose to fame by his association with many famous people on Broadway. They included William and Oscar Hammerstein, the Schubert brothers, Florence Zickfeld, and Lou Fields. All of these associations were important, but his most important association was with Mr. Fields. Mr. Wayburn went to work at the Lou Fields Theater in Herald Square. Those of you who don't know, that is where Macy's stands today. It was in this theater where Mr. Wayburn met his most famous student, Vernon Castle. He trained Mr. Castle in exhibition ballroom dancing. And with that training, Mr. Castle went on to many famous partnerships and performances. Mr. Wayburn thought to standardize his teaching technique and that covered five areas, tapping, acrobatic work, toe specialities, musical comedy, and exhibition ballroom. Most of his choreography included elements from the cakewalk, the grizzly bear, and the hesitation waltz. By the turn of the century, he created The Minstrel Misses, a feature act consisting of chorus girls. His success with the chorus girls led many aspiring dancers to seek his help for success. With increasing demand for lessons, he opened his own dancing school, the Ned Waver training school for dancing and for stage was on 1841 Broadway at Columbus Circle, and that was a huge success. The school expanded to five floors of dancing, but the main attraction was the floor with a grand piano. At the school, they offered 20 group classes daily. Classes included physical training, diet and exercise. Students were afforded the luxury of a shower and locker room at the studio. Specific classrooms were dedicated to acrobatics. Classes were also offered in stage makeup. However, students were asked to purchase the official Ned Weyburn makeup kit which represented his school. Stage makeup was a must in the school. And another must was weighing in. 
ladies had to get on a scale in Mr. Wayburn's office and see if they met every requirement. The school also had an extensive wardrobe department from which people could borrow clothes to wear for their performance. All the costumes in the school that were worn during the performances were manufactured in the school in the wardrobe room. As one of the most successful schools of dancing in the world, it also taught people the art of contracting and stage business. Mr. Wayburn was the first in the dance industry to open a chain of dancing schools. These dance contracts that they use are still used in many dance studios today. In addition to successful schools, Mr. Weber amassed many beautiful credits from Broadway. Many of the dancers that he trained became major stars in vaudeville. Perhaps his most famous students of all were two teenage dancers, the very famous Fred and Adele Astaire. Mr. Weber was teaching Fred Astaire at a very young age, so then he was able to convince him to switch from ballet to tap and ballroom. At the height of his success, Mr. Wayburn published this exquisite book of the art of stage dancing. It is a beautiful, beautiful work of art. He was the first to standardize dancing in this manner, after which Arthur Murray and Fred Astaire followed. As a dance director, Mr. Wayburn staged 200 vaudeville acts and 300 musicals. His crowning achievement was his association and working with Florence Ziegfeld. His choreography in the Ziegfeld Follies was an American extravaganza of dancing and imagination. Everything in this production was so good that it's the best that money could buy. He created this, the Ziegfeld Walk, which was the way the showgirls walked and sold their bodies to the highest bidder. One of these dancing Ziegfeld girls was my very good friend, Doris Eaton Travis. Doris was a student of Mr. Weyburn, but we will get to her in another chapter. The whole chapter will be dedicated to Doris Eaton Travis. In his choreography for the Ziegfeld Follies, Mr. Weyburn used geometric patterns best seen from above. This choreography served as inspiration to Busby Berkeley to take it to Hollywood. After many years of success, Ned Weyburn staged his final show in 1930. At this point, Vaudeville was in decline, and this show came about as a special favor, personal favor for Mr. Ziegfeld. The production was called Smiles and was the reunion of Fred Astaire with his sister Adele. The production also included Marilyn Miller. A promotional segment was made for the show, and this is the only segment that survived destruction, a proof that Fred Astaire danced with his sister Adele. As a memento to Mr. Ziegfeld and Mr. Weber, a production card was created and put in the lobby of the Ziegfeld Theater till its destruction in 2016. Although Mr. Weber's contribution to dance was many years ago, and there are many, many of them. No one talks about it now, but he still has made an impression on the dance world. He is a dancer worth remembering, a dancer par excellence.